Hello, everyone. Welcome to Supply and Demand Chain Executives Educational Webinar, New Trends in Yard Management. This is Laura Sawinski, Editorial Director of AC Business Media's Supply Chain Network, which includes SDCE and its sister publication, Food Logistics. SDCE has expanded its educational webinar lineup this year to nine events. Additional details on these webinars, including our archived versions of previous events, are available on the website at sdcexec.com slash webinars. Today we have two panelists on the program. Greg Braun is Senior Vice President, Sales and Marketing for C3 Solutions, and is also co-founder of the company. Greg has over 25 years of experience in the transportation industry, of which the last 15 have been focused on yard and dock management. James J. Noseworthy is Senior Process Improvement Leader with ES3, where he is responsible for coaching and building capability in a corporate pilot program to implement GPS, or Great Performance Systems. It's a continuous improvement methodology with systems and tools focused on identifying losses, eliminating waste, and driving results. Previously, Jay was the manager of the yard management system and yard operations for ES3 and CNS Wholesale Grocers. So as many of you know, our educational webinars are discussion-driven with only a handful of slides. But if you need to refresh your viewer, just hit the F5 key. And as part of our discussion, we encourage our audience to jump in throughout the program with questions and comments, which I'll address to Greg and Jay. Um, if you want to address a particular question to either Greg or Jay, just let me know when you submit your question. So today we're going to look at the latest trends related to yard management solutions and how YMS can significantly impact overall supply chain operations. We are going to engage in a candid conversation from the perspective of both a YMS provider as well as a longtime yard management user to glean some very important takeaways for the audience. Um, so Greg, let's start with you. Um, help us kind of set the stage with an explanation of yard management, uh, some history and background, types of operations that use yard management, and maybe the expected ROI as well. Sure, great. Well, hey, thanks a lot, Laura, for, in, for inviting us uh, this afternoon. Uh, looking forward to this uh, discussion. So yeah, in terms of um, you know, let me let me talk about the definition, and and I guess you know, in an ideal world, yard management wouldn't even exist, right? I mean, we could we could hope that traders would just come in to the through the gate, go straight to the to the doors to be unloaded, and you know, we'd, they'd just be showing up as empty trailers at the doors, and they would just ship out, and everything would be great. But unfortunately, that that is not the case. Um, Essentially, I mean, if we look at a yard management system, it's, it's really just it's a logistics system um, that essentially controls the flow of trailers into and out of a facility. It also manages kind of the inter-yard moves of trailers, usually carried out by dedicated yard drivers. Um, I'm from Canada, so in Canada we call those shunters. I will try not to use the S word, though, this afternoon. I'm just going to call them yard drivers. But, um, but that's a critical function usually of a yard management system. Um, and if we look at it, really, a, yard, a YMS system is really kind of, a, it's expected to provide a, a, an accurate inventory of trailers that are in the yard at any given time, and, and really also the contents of those trailers, trailers ideally down to like a, a SKU level. And, but at this point, you know, it's probably a, a good idea to emphasize that really the yard exists only to serve the facility that it's part of, whether that's, you know, a warehouse or a manufacturing plant. Um, therefore, you know, the, really the primary purpose of a yard management system, you know, really should be to make the facility more productive. And, and in this regard, you know, a yard, a yard system should be very tightly integrated with, with the operations, you know, whether that's receiving or shipping. And ultimately, you know, there should be an objective to kind of to get to a level of automation where the system is really creating a lot of those yard moves and so forth. We want to kind of eliminate, you know, it's great to get a system out there, but we want to you know, make that as, as automated as possible. And there are systems out there that do that today. Um, but, 
you know, traditionally yard management's really fallen into kind of a gray area. And it's come down, and it always comes down to: Does the warehouse management system really own the yard, or is it, or is it within the domain of the, of the transport system, the TMS? Or you know, sometimes even we'll see the ERP saying, "Yeah, well, we want to, you know, there, there's an ERP yard module or whatever." But you know, I think it's safe to say that because of that, because there's really been no real ownership. Uh, within any of the existing applications, the, the yard side of things has been somewhat neglected. Um, I mean, and it's not as you know, myself as someone that's you know a provider, and we were talking to, to companies all the time. It's really not uncommon to visit an organization, and you know they're very technologically advanced. They might have a, they have made a huge investment in a state-of-the-art you know warehouse management system. They might have a great ERP system as well. But then when you get to the yard. Um, they're using walkie-talkies and clipboards, so it's it's really a bit of a a weird thing. I mean, you've got you know you you have this black hole of the yard from an information perspective or information systems perspective, I should say, and that that is really peculiar. Um, if you if you allow me, I'd just like to do a little bit of a history of you know where yard solutions have come over the last 25 years. And as you mentioned, I have been. I've had the, I guess, the privilege to be involved in yard management for the last 25 years. So if we go back to that stage, I mean, really, yard management solutions started showing up when, when we were, we had access to wireless LAN technology. Um, and initially, for those of you in that uh, generation, um, you know, initially wireless technology was not was proprietary. So there were not really any kind of a there weren't kind of standard yard management systems or commercial offerings. You, you saw a lot of different proprietary systems. Um, they were fairly primitive, I, would, I think it's safe to say, but they, they really allowed operators to keep inventories of trailers and, and to do some tasking to yard drivers. Um, but they were very expensive and, as I mentioned, you know, quite proprietary. Really, the first breakthrough in the area of YMS um, was when we saw the standardization of wireless networks. And what I'm referring to there is like 802.11, those kind of things where now there was at least a standard network that, you know, as, as commercial developers, you could see software out there. Um, and now you didn't have to worry about which network you were running on and so forth. So that, that was a fairly big breakthrough as, as well. We started seeing automatic identification technology showing up um, about 10 years ago. And, and what I mean there more specifically is, Things like GPS trailer tracking and active and passive RFID solutions showed up. But, you know, kind of the, the, the next breakthrough that kind of made it much more accessible to the masses, if you will, um, would be when the wide area wireless networks uh, became accessible, you know, provided by, by the wireless carriers. So now you didn't need to set up your own wireless network. And um, that, again, brought down the cost factor uh, substantially. So, so what kind of operations are today and in the past have been traditionally using yard management? Well, again, as from the perspective of a provider, typically the types of companies that have invested in, in YMS are the, uh, the companies with, with expensive problems. Um, you know, so we're talking about very large operations, such as, you know, large transport companies, you know, courier companies, big trucking companies, so forth. Uh, large, very large retailers and, and manufacturers. So as I mentioned, these are, these are operations with very large yards, hundreds of trailers potentially that can be parked up at any given time, and they would be running you know, multiple, you know, 5, 10, even 20 yard drivers at one time. So very big operations and consequently very big problems. Um, again, as a provider, what we started to see around 10 years ago, 10, 12 years ago, um, the problem kind of shifted from that massive problem to where um, we started to see it as more of a flow or velocity issue. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, we started doing business in Europe or we started talking to European um, operators, and they obviously have much smaller yards, but that was part of their main challenge. So that now kind of optimizing the space and managing the flow of the yard was the key problem. So um, from a yard solution perspective, um, you had to be much more strategic in how, you, how we maximize the utilization of the trailers and, and really maximizing the space allocated to the yard uh, was a key challenge. So then, you know, essentially the yard, a yard system or YMS 
uh, more or less transformed from not only being kind of an inventory system, but one that enabled operators to enforce business processes that ensured that the right trader essentially was always at the right place at the right time. So, I mean, again, these were all fairly large operators, again, with very big problems. Now, thankfully, that whole situation has changed a lot with, you know, some of the technologies that we're going to talk about in, you know, later on in the presentation. You know, now I think it's safe to say that, that yard management solutions are pretty much accessible to any, any operation that's got a dedicated yard driver. So lastly, you know, I'll hand it back to you here in a second, Laura. The last thing I wanted to talk about was, you know, where are companies seeing a return on investment um, when they're looking at yard management? And I, it's been fairly consistent over the years that when we've been working with companies, the key cost area obviously is, is with our, our infamous shunters or yard drivers. That's where the biggest cost element is within, with, when managing a yard. And what we've seen from going from a strictly manual operation to an automated operation is we're gaining, or our customers were gaining 20 to 30% improvement and in, in increase in productivity. So, you know, if you're running with 10 yard drivers, you could see yourself go down to seven kind of thing. So there, you know, it was very, very big uh, savings there. And, and for those of you that aren't that familiar with it, when you look at the cost of a yard driver, um, if you say you have uh, two shifts running on one truck, depending on which market you're in, but if we use the U.S. as an example, um, you've got two drivers running on one vehicle uh, seven days a week. One vehicle can cost you, when you're looking at your labor costs, when you're looking at the, the maintenance and fuel costs and so forth, the depreciation on the vehicle, it can cost you anywhere between $175,000 to $250,000 a year. So, you know, when we've got 10 plus uh, drivers out there, or trucks going at one time, you know, there's a lot of money to be saved. When we look at, there's another key area where across the board we've seen improvement of, of uh, or, or savings that operations have gained, and that's in the in the area of, of trailer utilization. Now, not not all of the people that that implement yard management systems actually own their equipment, but those that do, um, we've seen between 10 and 15 percent uh, increase utilization of their existing assets. Um, for those companies that don't use, don't have their own uh, own equipment, but but use third-party equipment, you know, there's we've seen you know 90 to 95 percent reduction in trailer demurrage fees, and um, you know when you look at when you're managing a yard from a manual perspective, a lot of times you've got people out there doing specialized yard checks. Uh, you've got other kind of support staff that are out there doing, uh, say, if you're, say, a, uh, a grocer or in the food industry, you might have refrigerated trailers out there, so you're constantly doing reefer checks, that kind of thing. You can look at maybe not 100% elimination of these people, but all of those auxiliary staff, you can look at kind of cutting that down substantially. So th those are the key areas um, where you can look at gain, gaining a, a return on investment. So it's kind of a long-winded answer there, Laura, but hopefully I've framed things for you. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, really a good overview of kind of where we've come from and where we're at today. Um, Jay, I want to bring you in on the conversation. Uh, as we were discussing um, some of the content for the program last week, the more you talked about what you've done in the past, I, um, it was really clear to me that you've had really deep experience in this, so I've kind of referring to you as the power user. <laughs> so wondering if you could, um, Jay, talk a little bit about the history and experience that you've had in yard management. And then secondly, um, describe some of the key cha challenges you've had um, during your experience uh, man managing yards. Yeah, absolutely. So welcome, everybody, and hello. Um, so just a little bit, you know, I mean, I think the first question I would ask is, does anybody out there run your business in the dark? Do you just assume that your associates are doing what's expected of them? Do you think that all of the equipment is being utilized correctly? And, and, and I would think that if you just expect it to happen without some kind of visibility, control, and execution of process, uh, you'd be fooling yourself, right? So um, a little bit about 
my background, I started in 1989 in the moving business, driving tractor trailers, and I got my CDL uh, in 1990. Started driving, and for 15 years, I, I was a, a truck driver, mover, and became an owner-operator, co- cross-country driver. So I got out of that business, um, and, and you know, to make this story fairly much quicker, I got out of that business and went into uh, yarding with uh, CNS Wholesale Grocers. So I became a yard coordinator. When I got there, <clears throat> there was that darkness that I was just mentioning a minute ago. I mean, w- there was no control of the movement of the trailers. Um, our, the company was had a huge shrink uh, uh, of losing product. Uh, the management of, you know, we use a lot of pallets, millions of pallets a year. We didn't know where that stuff was. We were losing money on our assets by not, you know, having an out-of-service trailer sit for months at a time. Um, and, and the list goes on and on and on. So what I did was I started making all these manual lists, and I would <clears throat> make a manual list of all the out-of-service trailers and bring it to the shop. I would make a list of all of the trailers that had OS&D returns, uh, over, over, uh, overstock and damaged stuff that would come back from our stores, and I would bring it to the OS&D department. Um, I would bring the list of trailers. We utilized multiple types of trailers, 48-footers, 52-footers, uh, 46-footers with lift gates. We have reefers. We have dry vans. We have all kinds of stuff as we service um, all the supermarkets uh, up and down the East Coast. And so I would bring the, these lists to shipping, to receiving, to OS&D, to the shop, to the, all around because I started organizing the yard manually and, and realizing that there was just a, a complete darkness out there. And so my day was filled with um, moving trailers to the same areas, creating these pads and organizing the yard and filling out of these lists and running them around to all of the departments every day. And that was just one yard, not the biggest yard, by the way, um, Hatfield, Mass. So <clears throat> about two years into the, the yard journey, as it was, and I had pretty, con- pretty good control of the yard. I had a good re- rapport with the security and the gate and all the different departments. Um, one of our trans guys came around. He said, hey, you know, we've got this system called in, in a YMS. And it's in one of our other yards that it's been there for about a year and it's coming to Hatfield. And I was like, oh boy, I'm a truck driver. I don't know anything about computers. I never played video games. It was just never in my wheelhouse. So I thought, you know, a little bit scary at first, um, probably a little bit against it, thinking I had pretty good control in what I was doing manually. Um, but it came as progress does, right? And um, I learned it. And I started understanding that, wow, uh, I can, the system will update or I can update the system. I don't have to manually recreate the list every day. And what's even better is now I can start training other people how to go look for it themselves. That means, you know, um, what I call today is building capability. But even then I understood the power of uh, sharing the information with others in, in the utilization of the system. So, you know, Greg touched on well, what did it do for us? Um, let's skip over to the fact that I then started from the system as it was implemented to other yards. I started helping the other yards understand how to use the system, and there were huge, huge benefits. I mean, not just Within the yard, I think it was more towards the business as a whole. Uh, I mentioned a minute ago that we, you know, we utilized different types of trailers. We had a big problem with, um, you know, the the warehouse would say, bring us 248s and 351s footers, but they didn't know what was in the yard. So they would just start picking loads uh, to, to land at the dock, you know, 29 pallet loads or 16 pallet loads or whatever it was, right? But they're all different. And they would get trailers to the door that, you know, the yard might do their best with, but maybe a load didn't fit on the the small trailer they got, or maybe the trailer was too big and there was space left on the trailer. So our company had a buffer um, of many hundreds of trailers 
uh, with extra lease. And uh, within a couple of years, uh, within the, I think the first two years of, of really having rolled uh, the YMS out to the multiple yards, certainly all around the, the northeast where we had uh, six yards and then down into the New York area where we had two more and one out and two out into uh, uh, where were we in Pennsylvania and Maryland and once we once we really had control of that network we reduced our our rental trailers with extra lease to nothing I think it was at the time if I remember we were spending about four hundred thousand a month with them and um, in a two-year period we ended up reducing it to no rentals. Why? Because we did have enough equipment. But now the warehouse could pick the loads to what they had for equipment. And because we had a network understanding where the equipment was, um, we could even shuffle the equipment as we needed it to the right places. So we no longer had to just pick in the dark, hope for the best, and utilize what we had. We now had that visibility and control. Right? Um, you know, you talk about um, yard drivers as being one of the, the, the largest uh, ROIs there, Greg. I mean, I can tell you that I reduced, uh, we have a third-party provider for our yard service uh, in the Northeast. We reduced their labor cost uh, by a million dollars a year. So that, that's another plus right there where we were able to say, now there's a lot behind that, right? We didn't just tell them to reduce it. Uh, uh, when I talk about execution of process, you know, through the use of the YMS, we were able to, to be able to see and build metrics around what the moves per hour are supposed to be. Uh, we had uh, moves per hour, which were capable moves per hour, right? So we know that how long it takes to go get a trailer and bring it to the door or take the door trailer from the door back to the pad and the capability of the drivers and coaching them to understand that those moves per hour on average in a yard should be, let's say, eight moves an hour. Um, that's the capability factor. And we're able to see, well, we're actually putting, you know, 16 moves an hour out there, which means we only need two yard drivers. Why are there four? Right? Um, and, and being able to coach those guys up into what the expected uh, uh, KPIs are, and so then reducing that labor. That, of course, hits the, the equipment, you know, where you had nine or ten trucks, yard trucks sitting around the yard. Um, you know, you can reduce that by two or three. So that, that's huge to the lease. That also hits the fuel, uh, fuel costs. And being able to see, uh, you know, even just damage to a truck. Who had the truck last when that mirror was broke? Um, it, it really starts to bring that visibility to who's operating the equipment and, and that ownership. So uh, those those costs are also reduced. Uh, you know, but then there's, there's, there's a lot of other aspects to what that visibility and control can bring you. Um, you're able to really see, we move a lot of pallets. I mean, our, our business, everything gets loaded on pallets. We're a grocery business. Um, we have selectors that are out there running around on jacks with pallets and they load the cases on the pallets and then they get loaded on the truck. So when I say we utilize millions of pallets a year, I, I may be undershooting that a little bit. It could be tens of millions. It, it's really out there. And so we have a lot of trailers with pallets and we have different pallets, Whitewood and Shep and, and Paco. And, and, and where are those trailers? Where, how many are out there? Where, where is it when we need them? So certain customers expect a certain uh, pallet when they open up the trailer and see their product being delivered to them. Um, and, and so we were able to get control of that pallet flow. Shep is, a, you know, they're a big, powerful company. And at one point, we owed them a lot of money. We just, we, we weren't sure where the pallets were. Um, and with a YMS, we were able to see that, uh, not just in a yard, but in a network. And I think um, that's that's really something that can, you know, bring that Uber control that you, you just don't think of when you're thinking of, oh, well, a YMS will help me, you know, get better moves per hour. There's, there's really a lot more to that. You know, it, me personally, I was able to uh, get to the point where um, I really created a lot of metrics and productivity measures 
um, from the system, the reporting, the things that we were able to see about how we utilize the trailers, how they turn at the dock doors. Um, I mentioned a minute ago the moves per hour. All that kind of stuff really helped me understand what does it look like to run a yard um, for our company. And, and, and then being able to build the capability and all of the team members at the site and then even the regional guys and then up into the ex executive level, um, you know, getting, you know how the executives are. They want red and green, right? Where's my yard? Am I red or am I green? Uh, and, and being able to offer that really showed them that, um, you know, the yard is, is really important. And another point Greg made a minute ago, the yard really doesn't exist. It's, you know, I've always said it's like talking about the body, right? Well, the body is really the head and the arms and the feet and the legs and everything, right? So that, that's what the yard is. It's the building. It's the gate. It's the pads. It's the trailers. It's the, it's the, sh the shunters or yard drivers. It's the, um, it, it's the tractors. It's, it's everything that's in the yard um, it is part of the business. And so to think that that's the one place that you can't see, that you can't control, there isn't proper process of execu execution of proper process. Um, is it, When I think back, I can't imagine how deep I really was. Um, only now can I see with the control that we have and the visibility, um, you know, where they were to where we are now. Um, we've even branched out to start utilizing a third party provider for the yard service. And, you know, those guys came in and, and, and understanding that they already had a YMS and yard configuration and proper productivity metrics set up and the visibility control, not to mention the expectation, right, of what we wanted from them. Um, they came in and said, here's what we can do for you. But we were also able to say, here's what we want you to do for us. Um, and to be honest with you, it was, it was pretty much right across the board, uh, that understanding. I think they were just as impressed with knowing that we knew what we wanted as well as them understanding um, what it is that we needed, right? And that YMS is what brought us to that point. Um, it, it was able to give us the visibility, the control, and the execution of process. Thank you, Jay, um, very, very much for that. Actually, guys, both of you have really, really given us a, a pretty good look at the at the R ROI. Um, Jay, you mentioned, you know, reducing the number of rental trailers in the yard, reducing labor costs, et cetera. Um, Greg, you mentioned productivity gains in the neighborhood of, of 20 to 30 percent. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the software and tech side of it, um, particularly uh, how software and tech relates to the, um, the new and emerging trends. Um, Greg, um, run, run us through a couple things that you're seeing um, anywhere from the cloud-based um, sy systems that support y y YMS as well as um, how to integrate YMS um, with WMS and, um, of course, the, the holy grail, if you will, is um, quickly turning those 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 drivers so they can get back on the road, Greg. Yeah, sure. Um, definitely. I mean, it's. Um, I don't. I don't want to sound cheesy or anything, but you know, it, it is actually a very exciting time to be in yard management. As much as I've been doing this for a very long time. Um, it's 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 almost all new again, um, and and Laura, you mentioned cloud-based systems. Is that you know that's that's a huge you know I mentioned earlier how you know when we first when first started seeing um, yard solutions out there they were extremely expensive they were running on proprietary networks and everything was proprietary really, and and these poor drivers they had these big you know like forklift screens in their trucks that were like green screens and everything. Um, but today, we're talking about cloud systems. And, you know, and, and what are the benefits that cloud systems bring to, 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 to YMS? Well, I mean, it's very similar to what it does, what cloud systems bring to any other area, um, really. I mean, we're talking about a much lower cost of ownership. And, and usually when we're talking about cloud-based systems, we're talking about pricing options that are based on, on how much you use your system. So, so in terms of, you know, already we heard Jay talk about all of the, the potential savings that are out there. Well, now that whole that cost threshold has actually gone down even further. Um, and, and generally what we're seeing as well 
is it's much quicker to get customers up and running when we're talking about the cloud because, you know, in the past, you, you would have to go, you know, the customer would have to go back to their IT department. They'd have to procure all of this hardware and so forth. Now it's, you know, it's pretty much, you know, the systems are, are up and running, you know, not necessarily configured, but they're up and running immediately. So that's a, that's a big advantage. Now, I already touched on the, the lower cost public wireless networks. And, and I can't stress how much that that has just been a game changer. Um, you know, there's really, again, as a solution provider now, you know, it used to always be we would wonder, well, how big is this yard? And are they going to need to do a lot of engineering? Because that could just kill the project. Um, as much as we knew there were a lot of big benefits out there, and again, Jay talked about those, we knew those benefits were there. But, you know, you could run into the engineering costs and so forth to set up a private wireless network in a big yard. It could run you in the, in the in the area of a half a million dollars. So that cost is completely eliminated now. Um, it's as simple as just going out and, you know, depending on who your wireless provider is, you just get a monthly um, sign up and, you know, you're paying whatever, 40 bucks a month, and that's it. Uh, so so that's, that's a huge thing. The other thing we're seeing out there, which is, is exciting, is that now the, you know, I, I mentioned, I talked about those clunky green screens that we used to see in, in, in the yard trucks. Um, now we're seeing a lot much more, um, the devices that are being used out in the yard are the standard, you know, Android or iOS devices. And, and that's, that's pretty cool because now essentially what we're talking about is that everything's an app. So, you know, yard drivers, you know, you can, you know, in, in our company, I don't want to blow our horn right now, but I mean, you can go on the App Store and the Apple App Store, and you'll see our our app. So, when you compare that to what people have to, had to do in the past, if you wanted to um, set up this proprietary device in a truck, and it was just it was a multiple day event. You know, when you talk about wiring this thing into the truck and making sure it gets burned into the device, and all this, now it's like a the tablet, you go on the the app store, the Google store, you download it, and it's ready to go. Um, and and it offers, from a developer's point of view or a provider's point of view, um, we're able to do, you know, provide a lot more different kind of wireless applications. So not only are the yard drivers involved, if we've got, if we need to have a dock application, we can get the dock guys involved, and, and we don't have to. Again, bring some kind of a clunky device, and and because they're already doing things on the warehouse side of things, now it just becomes a, you know a very simple. Whether it's a smartphone or a tablet, they can update statuses, unloading statuses, and so forth, which avoid us having to do some kind of a detailed integration with the WMS. That still might be the preferable way to go, but it allows it gives us options. So you know, from an overhead point of view, um, there there's some really exciting things that are happening there. Now, let me, uh, and, and, and generally, again, it's making the system much more accessible. Let me talk about, you know, I know, Laura, you'd asked about the technology side of things. Let me, let me just slightly address one other area where it's, it's more of a, a trend, a business trend that we're seeing. And that is, um, you know, there's, there's essentially two things. There's the security side of things um, that we're seeing, and, and that translates, and again, for, I mean, I don't know how many people on the call are from Europe, but for those of us in North America, um, you know, the CTPAT is, is a, a standard. Uh, it's basically a supply chain security program that's, that's led by the U.S. Customs and Border Protection, which is focused on, you know, imp improving the security of private company supply chains. So we've seen this a, a lot where companies are coming to us and say, I need to be CTPAT certified and so forth. So we're seeing that, that uh, element of security heightening which is one, one trend, but then on the other side, we're seeing a demand to kind of reduce the time at the gatehouse, kind of contradictory uh, trends. But um, that, other, that other trend, if you will, is coming from the fact that um, there, there has generally been a shortage of drivers out there. Now, we've got a bit of a reprieve of late because the economy has softened, um, but if you remember about four or five months ago in the press, there was a huge issue in terms of the shortage of drivers. And again, as a provider, we were receiving calls from companies saying, hey, look, I really need to get my yard in order because if I don't, I'm not going to have access to transportation. The, the big you know, transportation providers are telling me they, I can't, uh, they don't want to deliver to my site because their drivers are being delayed too much. So you know, that's, that's a huge issue. 
So as a, as a solution provider, we're, you know, we, we need to look at how can we help our customers better plan this and, and kind of in, increase the throughput at their gates. And, and this, again, is a new trend. This is something we hadn't seen in the past. So, you know, how are we going to do that? Um, you know, some of the solutions that are out there is, and, and we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We can go and look at other industries. So like at the airline industry, you know, we were all getting pretty tired of waiting in line uh, at the airports. Well, now, hey, use your use your smartphone and check in before you show up at the airport. Well, you know, why can't we do that with, with drivers at the yard? So those are the kind of things that, that as a provider we're looking at, at getting out there. And, and when it comes down to it, I mean, to, to do these, these new trends, to be able to adhere to these or comply to these two different factors, one being increased security and the other is kind of increased throughput at the gate, we're simply just going to have to plan better. Um, the fact of drivers showing up unannounced that's going to pretty much, uh, it's not going to happen anymore because, I mean, if we need to be able to be more secure and we need, need to be able to get people in and out of the yard quicker, we're going to need to plan. So those are some of the things that we're seeing out there, some of the trends. But, uh, you know, as I initially said, it's, it's actually a very exciting time to be involved in yard management right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, Greg, you raised, raised some uh, some good points. I mean, I think, like you said, you can kind of have, have it both today in that, you know, you could certainly um, boost compliance um, with the various regs out there, CTPAT, et cetera, and kind of um, certainly improve uh, the safety and so forth. Um, and at the same time, kind of reduce the throughput at, at the gate. Um, you don't have to choose one, one or the other, if you will. Um, and it's, again, it certainly sounds like cost as a barrier to en- entry is, um, you know, not not as uh, not as much of a burden, if you will, um, as pre- pre- previously. Um, some great points. So I kind of actually want to turn to Jay again um, as our power user on the panel. <laughs> Jay, and kind of um, bring us into the next um, few topics that we have. I, I'd like if you could to kind of identify some of the di- differentiators out there um, with the uh, WMS that's available in the market. And then kind of part two, if you will, Jay, um, lead us into where does RFID fit fit in? Yeah, so with, with as far as the WMS is concerned, I mean, we utilize um, multiple warehouse management systems in our, in our enterprise here. And so we, we have not yet gone into the integration uh, full integration between a YMS and a WMS as, as, as so far today, but I will tell you that pulling the data from YMS um, and utilizing that to, uh, you know, with our analysts to, to, with the data from a WMS, I know it still sounds kind of archaic to be able to pull the two into a spreadsheet, spin it, and, and get the reports that we need, but because we have the two systems, we still are able to do that. Um, and, and drive a lot of efficiency. So that's how we're doing it today. Um, so it's not a one-sided coin as it was. Uh, it's, it's definitely beneficial to our company to have the two systems, all that data available, and be able to use it as we need it. As far as RFID goes, um, you know, I, I'm not a big fan. I just, you know, put that out there. I, I have used it. Um, we have it in, in our, actually in our largest site, uh, in York, Pennsylvania, um, it's a 2,000 trailer site. And prior to my getting there, um, the thought was, well, if you put a tag on the trailer, then you, it just goes into the yard, and we know where it is. Um, so what we were, what I found initially uh, very frustrating is that that the business or the people on site, that the business accepting that uh, as the way to go. Uh, caused a lot of problems, caused a lot of heartache. I mean, it probably was only, geez, on a good day, I want to say 70% accurate, right? So you're talking about 30% of 2,600 trailers. We just weren't too sure where they were. (laughs) And I can guarantee you a lot of those trailers every day were the trailers we needed most, right, Murphy's Law. So, um, you know, with with a YMS set up correctly to the configuration of the yard, Process is king, period. I think that someday uh, RFID may be something that is, um, you know, 25, 50, I don't know how many years away, but 
you know, I'm sure it's something in development that, that will get better and better. But for today, um, having the right configuration and the right process in the yard and having the, the end users, the, the shunters, the, the shipping clerks, uh, the, the, the gate folks, um, you know, with them utilizing the system properly, understanding the process, um, being the mini managers of the yard and utilizing a yard management system to, to uh, facilitate their process is where the power is. And so when I got to York, um, I was utilizing a system that was um, fairly difficult uh, to, to navigate, to report from, and to use, um, also to, to, to configure. And I'm, I'm a control freak. I like to be able to uh, get in there and um, structure the logic and, and, and use what I need to use in the system to, you know, force the control out there, uh, the process as it was, so that people can do their jobs, right? The hourly em employee can get out there and do his or her job. So uh, the system that we were utilizing on the site, which was already there when we took control of it many years before, um, was difficult, but I, you know, again, I formed some process in it that along with the RFID brought much more control uh, to where the, the assets were in the yard. Um, first of all, you know, a basic configuration, right? The empties go together, the loaded go together, you know, you break that down between our company trailers and the third party trailers, all the pallet trailers go together. Um, you know, there are pads for higher turning trailers to the doors as they will be, um, you know, placed and pulled quicker. Uh, so all of that process and understanding um, in a yard where there were 13 jockeys out there, shunters, whatever you call them, or wherever you're from, yard operators, um, each, each person had their area of the yard. They understood what they needed to do and the process they needed to execute um, in the system. Uh, that would make it successful so that we were not losing 30% of our trailers a day. Uh, the, the building did not wait for trailers as long as they were waiting. Um, they did have the right asset to the door that was needed to load the trailer or the right asset to the door of the product uh, that they needed to uh, get into the building to be for shipping that day. And especially, it's a dry facility in York, so we do when I say thousands of trailers of water a week, for some out there you may think I'm exaggerating, I assure you I'm not. Um, uh, should have been in the water business 25 years ago, that's for sure. Um, so, you know, there's water trailers sitting out there of the same skew, you know, 10 or 20 of them. How do you get the newest, how do you get the oldest one to the door first, not the one that's newest, that's sitting closest, right? Um, all of that and understanding how to see that in the YMS and execute that process and not just falling back on uh, the RFID tag um, was uh, found to be the right way to do that. So while it helped us, um, it was not the, the it was not the technology they thought it was, and, and it certainly is still not for us today. I, I don't know if anybody out there has, as of the last six months, a, a tag that is that assured and true to um, where it says the trailer will be, but it's nothing I have experienced. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, Greg, I actually want to ask you the same thing then um, uh, before we take a couple questions from the, uh, the audience, but, Greg, so what's your um, view on our, uh, you know, do you do you feel the same the same way as Jay, or a little bit di different? What's what do, you, what do you think? Well, I mean, I guess I come at it from a slightly different perspective than Jay. Um, I can understand some of the frustrations he's run into. I, I look at it more from as a provider of solutions, and, and and let me just put it out there is that, you know, C3 doesn't sell any particular types of tags or what have you, um, we more or less sit down with our customers and say, hey, is, is this an opportunity to use some kind of a technology like RFID? And, and, and maybe I'll expand it a bit more as well to talk about other solutions like, say, GPS trailer tracking. Um, as a solution provider, I, 
I love to go into a situation where the customer already has, they've already justified um, a positioning system. Say, for example, like a, they've got a network-wide uh, trailer tracking system. So now that's something we can leverage within the yard, and, and there's, there's a different angle that we can take to it, as opposed to saying having a point solution that says we're going to, we want to have, you know, RFID tags or whatever just for the yard. Um, because I think, you know, there, there are some unique challenges there, um, and, and we need to take a step back and say, okay, um, are we running, uh, do we have mostly a private fleet that's coming into our yard, or are we dealing with a lot of third-party providers? If we're dealing with a lot of third-party providers, and we're now going to count on RFID, um, I can very much sympathize with Jay, in, in, because now we're building a process to, to kind of add tags to trailers that aren't ours, and we've got to make sure we're going to take them off when they leave. So we're really almost complicating our lives to a large degree. Um, and, and essentially, even now, we're not only managing yards, now we're managing tags and so forth. And again, when we take a step back, we have to say, okay, well, what, what is RFID really doing for us or, you know, within a yard management context? And, you know, I think the simple answer is it's providing us the position of the trailer. Um, so, you know, now we have to look at, well, okay, um, is that our biggest problem? Um, and when we're talking about you know, managing a yard, and I think, you know, in previous answers, Jay's already talked about some of the challenges he's had and, and, and the way he's been able to solve them. And, you know, we all know now he did that without using RFID. And, and, and a lot of times when I'm talking to people, and they're not necessarily experienced with it, with a yard management solution, and they're looking at me and saying, you know what, I think if I just knew where all my trailers are, everything would be better. Um, and unfortunately, it's not that easy. And, but I can understand why people have that opinion, because when you're running a yard from a manual perspective, and, and you know, Jay mentioned how it's kind of a black hole, and it's, you're in the dark. You, you have no idea. And, and a lot of times, it's just really tough to know what's going on. So you're thinking, if, if, if the lights just turned on, I'd everything would be better, right? Um, well, again, we have a different approach to that. And, and, and when we, you know, when we look at our customers and we start helping them out, again, we put in process and so forth, and we start helping them organize things and say, okay, we're not going to, and we're not going to allow certain types of vehicles to be parked here because, you know, all the full trailers are going to go there and so forth. So we organize things, put some structure to it, you know, using an electronic system. And um, once we start doing that, then the value of the position um, reduces dramatically. So it's not to say that there is no value because there is. And, and we've also worked with customers where, again, like they've already got a solution in place. Place. Um, their specific context uh, made it virtually impossible to know where traders are going to be. So yeah, if we have that position now, the position, the value of the position goes up, and it, it makes sense. But I would really caution people when you're looking at things, take a look at what is that value of the position. And um, you know, when we look at it, we see that um, you know, in in and it's no fault to any of the any of the providers or or solutions that are out there. Unfortunately, today, no one can deliver 100%. And if you're not going to deliver 100%, you now need to have a backup plan to say, okay, um, if my automated uh, positioning system doesn't tell me where my trailer is, if it says that it's here when it's not, why did that happen? Uh, did that happen because we parked at the wrong spot or did the technology fail? And Again, with my experience talking to people that are using different solutions, there's a lot of extra friction in there and overhead to be able to resolve these issues. And again, it's no fault of the providers. Their, their solutions are delivering at the level that they've said. It's just that they're not 100%. And that's the big problem that we've seen. And, and so consequently, if we live with the fact that we are going to have position issues, we, we, and we're ready to deal with that. Um, we, you know, I, we've found it generally that there's less of a requirement for it. But, you know, given on the provided the certain context and so forth, certain operations where you've got a perfect private fleet and there's the only vehicles in your yard and so forth, you know, there are some some opportunities. Um, I definitely want to ask uh, a couple questions, really good questions, actually, that have come in from the audience. Um, Jay, I'm going to address this first one to you. The um, question is, um, how easy was it to train the security guards? Um, as we all know, of course, oftentimes um, that involves outsourced personnel, um, 
it's not uncommon, of course, to have high turn turnover rates, um, folks that aren't computer sa savvy. Um, Jay, do you want to address that? Yeah, so <clears throat> it, it, it's not a real stretch because what we have found is that a security guard or a gate person um, was collecting all of the data manually. So there'd be these sheets that they needed to get the trailer number, the size of the trailer, the company name, uh, what we call today a load type, meaning was it empty, was it loaded, what was on it, what's the PO if it's loaded, um, is it out of service, how do I notate that? Um, and what we found was we were giving them an electronic um, form of that. And so teaching them how to type in the trailer number um, to drop down, you know, very often it's a drop down choice for the trailer size or the load type, uh, the, uh, the, the PO they might have to punch in. Um, it's definitely a drop down for the company name. Uh, very often we, we bridged any kind of spelling errors because it's all in there. They just have to type in, you know, uh, JB and then JB Hunt comes up, that kind of thing. Um, you know, I, you're still going to have, you know, typo errors or, you know, things that are, um, you know, subjective to the, the person that, that could be uh, input incorrectly. We, we've had to deal with that a little bit, but that's, that's to no fault of the system, right? So you have to continually train folks, and I think that you would see that even if they were, um, they were collecting that manually. Where, where we want to take it next is is really to the point of integration so that um you know and there there are systems out there i know c3 does that with their doc scheduling and yard as well um where you know the information is put in from some other place meaning the brokers the the the, the receiving people the the uh the warehouse management system and so how that uh information already resides somewhere else and can be fed to the gate application of a yms uh, so that the, the gate person now begins to type in a, a PO number and everything pre-populates into the gate event um, is, is where we're going next and seeing that it's, it's really, uh, it, it really drives a lot of efficiency, especially when um, that can, you know, make up with your logic in the YMS. In other words, hey, I've already, I've always got the water coming in and it goes to doors 79 to 82. So, you know, if those doors are available, um, then, then that gate event will, in the YMS, will push that trailer right from the gate to the door um, so that the receiver only has to see now that it's, you know, it's come in, it's here, and it's going right to the door. Um, all of that functionality um, is really systemically driven. We did try, you know, in the years previous to having systems to do that on a manual basis, and, it, it, I mean, within 24 hours it just didn't work. Um, there was a lot of confusion. So... Um, as far as the gate people are concerned, the answer to the question is, I think it simplifies their life. Um, it really, it, it makes them um, feel more control when, you know, they're typing in and able to see the information come up to them or not having to completely write everything out as it was. And certainly, um, you know, when it comes, by, by having it drop down and easy to type in, it facilitates faster gate-ins. Um, you know, obviously the integration to the other systems, a doc scheduling system or uh, uh, the WMS is going to greatly increase the efficiency of the gate even more. But when you don't have to write absolutely everything down, um, that really streamlines your gate. And the final thing I'll say is reporting, right? When did something get there? Uh, what was it when it came in? Um, you know, what was the company? All that kind of stuff. Um, to go into a system and, and do a quick search, you know, in the C3, it's F5, I type in a trailer number, bam, the whole history is there, um, is not, uh, you know, anyone who's had to comb through files and files and files of paperwork looking for that needle in a haystack would know how painful that is. Uh, thank you, Jay, for that. Um, we only have a few more minutes left, so, Greg, I'm going to... Um address uh, the future challenges related to yard management to you and, and kind of find out um, what demands um, the supply chain is, is, is bringing and what the, the response might be. And then I'm going to give the, 
the final word to Jay. But um, Greg, do you want to address that for us? Yeah, well, and, and I can be fairly brief here, Laura, because I think I already touched on it to a certain degree. I mean, I think the biggest challenge we're seeing in the yard now, and, and again, it, it, we're seeing it now, and I think we'll be seeing it for a while, is the, the, the fact that we've got this increased security requirement and we've got the issue with the, 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 the capacity crunch in, in the transportation uh, or in the trucking industry. Um, you know, and, and I'm not going to go into the reasons on why that exists, why there's a lack of drivers. I think it it's, could be demographic and there's, there's all kinds of things, but it, it is what it is. And, and as I mentioned, we've got a bit of a reprieve right now, um, but once the economy starts picking up, we're going to see issues. So we're going to have to be able to turn drivers around even faster at the yard. That's, that's going to be a new challenge we're going to have to deal with. And the, the, the requirement for security is not going to go away. Um, so, so we're going to need to, to start doing innovative things, um, like I mentioned, where you know it, it doesn't make sense that our driver can check into the yard before he actually shows up on his smartphone. Is that something we want to go for? Um, you know, we think that's a good idea. Um, we also, you know, I think we're going to have to, to deal with the fact there's going to need to be better planning. So you can't just have people show up at your yard. They're going to need to. You know, in the worst case, they're going to need to book an appointment. They're going to need to be able to at least make it, make them, make it aware to the operation that they're showing up and so that we can deal with them and, and, and help, help them get through that, you know, in and out as quickly as possible. I think those are the, the biggest issues, you know, over and above all the other things that we've talked about, you know, and Jay's done a great job of talking about the actual, you know, the real problems that are on the, on the, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the field, if you will. But I think if we're going to talk about the things that are coming up. Those are the real issues, and um, you know, and they're they are substantial challenges. But you know, I think we're we're definitely we're we're definitely up for it. Uh -huh. great. Thank you, Greg, for that. And Jay, I am going to give you the the last word. Um, Greg certainly raised some good points as to what you know the real uh, pressing concerns are right now and going for, forward. So, kind of a, a two part question for you, Jay, as we come to the top of the hour. Um, one, what do you think YMS providers could do better? And secondly, why don't you leave us with um, that one piece of advice out there for those wanting to improve what's going on in their, in their uh, yard? Yeah, I, so, you know, I think that one of the greatest challenges we really have out there right now is integration of systems. We're a system-saturated um, uh, world right now in, in many industries, and so, you know, having um, a provider um, not only offer um, easy integration, but even if they're combining some of those systems that are already out there, I know, you know, you know, like the dock scheduling in the yard, they, they go together, uh, you know, making that then something that is um, easily acceptant of data flow from uh, a, a WMS, whether that was a proprietary or a shelf bought um, system, you know, those those are the things I think the providers, um, some providers out there are doing well uh, and, and so need to keep the focus on, you know, for the second part of this, and I can see the time ticking away for folks out there, um, you know, any, any part of your business that you can't see, that you don't have control of, um, there is a very deep well of opportunity. And I think that anybody who's looking at any part of the business and thinking that, um, you know, having the right folks and not to knock, knock people, but, you know, people are people, right? So having the right folks and just knowing that they're doing the right thing. And, and, and even if you're a, the smaller company, I mean, CNS has some very small yards and we have some very large yards. And we have found that having a yard management system in either one of those um, has been um, uh, a, a game changer. I, I can't stress that enough. And so um, we are moving out and implementing um, as we go. Uh, right, you know, I don't know anyone out there who's heard of CNS before, but you know, we're we're expanding very rapidly. And so the need for um, a proprietary, a one-stop, you know, top shelf YMS. Um, that's going to easily integrate with the systems as we start to work towards what does that one trans system look like? What does that one WMS look like? What does that one YMS look like? And being able to tie them all in together um, to have uh, that kind of high level and control 
um, whether you're one yard in the multiple systems or you're 60 yards in sites like we are with multiple systems, it's tying that in um, and, and having those, those top shelf providers who do all the background work. I mentioned a while ago I was never a computer guy. I'm still really not, but I work with systems um, that do what I need them to do. I'm a process guy. Um, and so when I have a system that I can go to that does what I need it to do, um, that's where the success is driven from. Um, and, and the money will follow. Very good. Thank you, Jay, for that. And, of course, thank you, Greg, as well. Um, and a final thanks to our audience for joining us today. An archived version of today's event will be posted on the SDCE website at sdcexec.com. Um, our panelists today have been Greg Braun, Senior Vice President, Sales and Marketing for C3 Solutions, and James J. Noseworthy, Senior Process Improvement Leader with ES3. This is Laura Swinsky, Editorial Director for AC Business Media's Supply Chain Network. Have a great afternoon.